It is great to have you at Inglewood today. It is great to have each of you. Maybe you're visiting. It is a privilege to have you in our, in our sanctuary and even in our building. There's kids. Uh, we have different programs for our children. They're actually celebrating just like we're celebrating in here. And so they're going to have some uh, great times. I think they're all going to leave with something special, you know. Um, wouldn't you want to be a kid to leave with a nice bag of candy, right? Yeah, so you guys are all going to go to kids' church, right? That's how it works. That's how it works. Well, this morning, I actually got a surprise for you. Um, everybody is going to leave here with something. Okay? Now, what that something is, is up to you. Okay? But I'll even one step it further. Um, you will actually get to leave with something in your hand. How about that? How about that? You know, it's always good to get something when you go to church. And I promise you, everyone's leaving with something today. And probably more than what you expected, so that's a good thing, okay? It's always good to show up to church and know that you're going to have something in your hand leaving. And uh, I, love, I love what God is going to do this morning. Uh, I know that you've come, your hearts are prepared to hear what the Lord, uh, the Lord would speak to us. But uh, we've been walking through, um, just in the last few weeks, a series that is uh, entitled Rooted. Everybody say Rooted. It is uh, going through the book of Romans. Now, it's a pretty intense book. It's matter of fact, there's a lot of depth in it. There's a lot of theology. And if there's anything in being a Christian, if you came today and you're a Christian, that's awesome. If you came today and you're not a Christian, that's awesomer. And you say, well, what's, what's up with that? Well, because you're in the right place. You're in the right place because because God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross. Now, there's a cross behind me. There's a cross on the top of the cross. You see the crown of thorns. And you see that the cross is empty. He did die on the cross. He was put in a grave. But the Bible tells us on the third day, what? He rose again. And he's alive. That's why we celebrate today, this Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus took place. It's a powerful thing. And in the book of Romans... Paul, we've been talking about Paul. He's the author. And Paul has incredible credentials. He's went through a lot. He suffered a lot to, for the sake of the gospel. And we've been talking about that the fact is the gospel is the kingdom of God. There's a place besides where you're at today that has been established. God has established a place for all of us to live for eternity. It's true. And all of us have the opportunity to be with him because of the price Jesus paid on the cross. Matter of fact, all of us in this room today, we have a lot to, be, to celebrate. Um, one thing we're going to do today is also take communion. Now, for some of you, you might say, well, what is communion? Um, I'm going to explain that here in a little bit. But actually, the Bible tells us on the night that Jesus was betrayed, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he was doing something that he loved to do best. He was spending time with people. He was fellowshipping with others. He was, he was investing in people. That's what our Lord loves to do. He loves to take time. And matter of fact, they were fellowshipping. It's called the Last Supper. And what he did is he, he, he was there with his disciples. And there was, there was a table, a feast the feast was before them, and he took some, some bread, sort of like this. And he took the bread, and he said, this is, this is my body. And now this is something that's so powerful, church. This is a man that is predicting his death. This is a man that's on the scenes. If you were here last week, we talked about the line of David. The week before, we talked about prophets in the Old Testament. This is something, this is something that was predicted years in advance. And here we have a man sitting at the Last Supper with his disciples, and he takes a piece of bread, and he says, this is my body. And what he did is he took the bread, and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. Church, he, he did this before he went to the cross. He predicted his death and he said, my body will be broken. 
Now we know that not only was it broken, but it was bruised. It was beaten. His body took lashings. And you know that that took place upon, upon the cross where they just beat him and he hung there. And some of you have seen probably, you know, the passion for Christ or things like that. And they try to predict, or not predict, but they try to give a clear image of what Jesus went through. But no one, as much as, much as you've ever seen, maybe it displayed before you, you cannot imagine the weight of sin that was on him. Do you realize that Jesus came for one reason? He came because the Father created us for relationship. God created humanity for relationship. Everybody say relationship. Do you know relationships are the most important thing on this side of eternity? And I believe it's on the other side as well. Relationships are so important. Look, you know, look to the person to the right and left of you this morning. They're not here, and they're not with you because hopefully you didn't make them come, right? But some of you did, right? You know, that's okay. <laughs> Believe me, I grew up in church. I was made to come all the time. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just a reality. I was like, oh, man, we have to go to church again? Come on. And it wasn't, I mean, it was bad enough going to church sometimes as a kid. I, no, I'm just speaking reality here. But then my parents were involved. <laughs> Come on. We were always the first to show up. We were always the last to leave. You know, you know anybody grow up that way in church? Oh, we get a hand clap. There you go. Wow, how about that, you know? Yeah, there's a mission. Jesus was, Jesus was on a mission. Just as much as you're sitting next to somebody that you hopefully love, right? Jesus loved us. He loved us. Why would he ever leave heaven? We're always like, we're like, oh, I want to go to heaven. It's going to be awesome. Why would he leave an awesome place to die for you? Do you ever wonder that? Do you ever wonder what, what in the world? Wasn't there like a, another plan? Come on, God. You know, no. God had a plan from the very beginning of time to have relationship with his people. And Adam and Eve in, the, in Genesis kind of just blew it. Did you ever blow it before? Yeah, we all have. We all have mess ups. We all have faults. We all, we all just sometimes are just, let's just face it, we're just stupid. I mean, seriously, how, how dumb can we be sometimes? I think that's why Jesus relates us as sheep. You know, they're per I've seen videos literally of sheep just go off the cliff following each other. You know, and the first like, you know, first hundred die because they hit the ground, but the next they just fall on top and they're okay. Sometimes we do the same thing. We just follow each other. We're like, oh, okay, we're going this way. No, well, God knew that we weren't the smartest crew in the bunch. But he, 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 he gave us an option. And that option was to have relationship. He wanted relationship with us from the get-go. And the only thing that could restore a relationship with the Father is, is if his son came. Now, what can, what can hurt relationships? And this isn't a relationship seminar, but what can hurt relationships? I think miscommunication can hurt. You know, when, when maybe your spouse says one thing and they, maybe they ended up doing something else. Okay, so miscommunication can, can hurt our relationships. Um, what else can hurt our relationships? Probably not spending time with that person. You know, time is a valuable thing, isn't it? Um, something that I, I like to do a little teaching real quick on time. It's spelled T-I-M-E. The T stands for treasure. You should treasure time. The I stands for invest. You should invest your time. The M stands for manage. You should manage your time. And the E stands for enjoy. You should enjoy your time. But we need to spend time with people that we care about and people that we love. And so that's important. That's why Jesus was at the Last Supper. He was doing that. He was spending time with those he loved. And we'll get to the cup here in a second. Misunderstandings. No time with that person. Mistrust. This one's a good one. Yeah, we can, we can actually, let's throw that, uh, that slide on the screen. Trust, it takes years to build, seconds to break. 
and forever to repair. Trust, trust is one of those things that, especially in, in like relationships, it's needed, isn't it? Are you with me? And, and God trusted that Adam and Eve would have made the right decisions, but they didn't. But aren't you thankful for something that's called grace? Come on, husbands. Aren't you thankful? Huh? How about wives? Yeah. You know what? A good marriage is one that has grace in it because you're not perfect. And if you're planning on getting married someday, young person, just realize something. You're not perfect, and the person you're marrying is not perfect. And guess what? When you marry somebody, you marry the whole family. And they are definitely not perfect. Everybody say amen to that, right? Oh, I didn't, you didn't tell me that, Pastor Brandon. I, I, I do marriage counseling, and that's one thing that we talk about. You think you love this person, that's great, but do you love the rest of them? Okay, I'm just saying. I'm thankful I married a great, great family and a great wife, and all that's good. So anyhow, but mistrust can mess a relationship up, can it? Selfishness. Mm, this, one's one, this is one that just gets in the way. If you are selfish, you're going to have a hard time with relationships because it's all gone about me and mine. It's all about what, what it's in for me. It's, you know, relationships don't work that way. And if you function that way, you're always going to struggle in relationship, right? It's true. Offense. Mm, this, one's, this one's a good one. You take offense to something. Someone did this. Somebody looked at you that way. Somebody didn't like you like your post on Facebook this week. Are you with me? But can I tell you something? Don't get your value in that. Your identity is not shaped on that. Your identity is not shaped on what somebody thinks of you. Okay? Your identity is shaped in the very person that made you. So if you're here today, I want to tell you that relationships is hard business. It gets messy sometimes. Why? Because there's selfishness there and there's pride. Oh, we don't want to mention that one, do we? Pride gets in the way of relationship. Well, I'm not wrong. Heaven forbid. I've never been wrong in my life. And there's that saying, you know, I made a mistake once, but, you know, uh, what was, no, I, I, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. That's it. That's it. You know, all of us, all of us can say those things, but you know what? Pride can keep us from relationship with others, and especially, listen today, pride can keep you from your relationship with God. And that's not the place you want to be. Matter of fact, let's just call it what it is. Let's talk about sin. On Easter Sunday, Pastor, are you serious? Come on, yeah. Sin is what started it all. Sin is the root, and pride actually is the root of all sin, but sin is the result of pride. And so sin is what separated us from our relationship with God. That's it. Sin came in, and that is exactly what happened in our relationship with our king. We were separated. Have you ever been separated from someone you love? Have you? Yes. All of us probably have. We've maybe lived somewhere a distance away from family. Sometimes you've maybe been on a trip and, and you've been away from the person that you love. So, stuff separates us, but what ultimately separates us from God is sin itself. Sin separates us. So sin keeps us from this relationship with God. We have to have a way back. How is that? Listen, we are in need. We are in big need, should I say, of a Savior. We're in a big need of a Savior. Because only He could put us and reconcile us back to the Father. That's, that's the mission. Jesus had to come. And, the, and the, the amazing thing is, is He came at Christmas. We celebrate. He came as a baby in a manger. He was born to a virgin. How does that happen? There are things, there are things in the Word of God. It's like, what? This is, this is counterfeit. This is just fake. How could this happen? And then he predicts his death. There's no way. How could a, how could a God? No wonder they crucified him, right? 
Listen, the kingdom principles sometimes just don't make sense to you and I. And they shouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because they're miraculous. Because they're miracles. Because God, the God we serve does the impossible. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to us. Matter of fact, Isaiah said it well. He said, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. There is no way sometimes we can comprehend what Jesus, the Lord, and the King of Kings could do. But he predicted his death, and he did it because he loved you. Because he had a plan. See, we're not talking about something that's, that's, that's made up. This is not make-believe, folks. Are you with me? Church, this is not something that we, we came up with a great story and put it on a flannel board in Sunday school. It's, it's not something that we just somehow just decided to, to, uh, um, to con in some way. Matter of fact, this is a powerful thing we're going to look at today. Jesus took our place. He died upon the cross. He took our, our unrighteousness so that you could be made right to have a relationship with the Father. That's what our God did. Matter of fact, when he took this bread and he broke it, he said, it is broken for you. And then he took the cup. He took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, which will be shed for you. Now, this is the night before he was betrayed he did this. He took the cup and he said, my blood, my blood will be shed. It will redeem you. His blood is the very thing that had, there had to be a sacrifice. His blood forgives us of our sins. It's the sacrifice upon the cross that forgives us of our sin, that gives us access to the Father. Are you with me, church? That's what happened upon the cross of Calvary. That's what happened the night before he explained and he said, I am going to have to die. I'm going to have to die so that you can have relationship with my Father in heaven. And he did. He paid the price so that we could have a relationship. But I want you to go to Romans because we're in our Romans series. I want you to go to Romans. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 1. And we're going to start there this morning. Romans chapter 1, verse 4 through 6. Yes, we're going to run through three verses today. How about that? Amen? For some of you regulars, yeah, Romans. We're, get, we're, we're, going, to accomplish, we're going to accomplish just as much as we did in the last four weeks. How about that, huh? Pretty good. Okay, Romans chapter 1, verse 4. It says this, and he was shown to be. Everybody say shown to be. You know we live in the show me state, right? Listen to these words. He was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now in the message it says, his unique identity as the Son of God was shown by the Spirit when Jesus was raised from the dead, setting him apart as the Messiah, our Master. Verse 5 says, through Christ, God, God has given us the privilege. Everybody say privilege. And authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. In verse 6 it says, and you, <laughs> this is good, this is including us, and you are included among those Gentiles who have been called, everybody say called, to belong to Jesus Christ. How do you belong to somebody? It's through relationship. Relationship is required to belong to somebody. And that's what Jesus came to accomplish. Now here's the powerful thing I want us to see what Paul is writing in verse number 4. And let's, let's look at verse 4 again. If we can get it on the screen, verse 4. And he was shown to be the Son of God. See, God's promises, God's promise itself was authenticated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
See, he could have died on the cross, but if he didn't rise again, we're in trouble, folks. Our God would be dead. But, but Jesus, just like his father, keeps his promise. And it is the very thing he was shown, because he resurrected, it was shown, he was shown to be the son of God. That's what Paul, Paul's saying before he even starts the book of Romans. He is setting the stage for what Jesus accomplished. And he's setting the stage for something. There are things in this world that are fake. Do you believe me? There are fake things in this world. Matter of fact, there's counterfeit things in this world. Aren't you thankful that Jesus proved himself to be the son? Did Muhammad? Did Buddha? No, those guys died. There's only one man that ever walked the face of the earth that died. And, and then he also predicted his death. And it also was prophesied for hundreds of years prior. He's only one man, and his name's Jesus, that actually rose again. Amen? That's authenticity right there, folks. If you're wondering, listen, there are a lot of fake things and counterfeit things in this world. There are. And I'll just be honest with you. Um, I have a couple baseballs here. Anybody like to play baseball? Yeah? Yeah? Can anybody catch a baseball? Some of you can? Okay. Here's the cool thing. My, I don't know if I, some of you might know this. Maybe most of you probably don't. But my brother married Nolan in the Nolan Ryan's family. Um, some of you don't even know who he is. But he, he was an okay pitcher, right? <clears throat> and so... Um, I called my, my sister-in-law, that's, that's, that's um, Nolan's niece, and anytime we need a ball, I sometimes do auctions and stuff to raise money, these two for missions and stuff, and I get an autograph signed ball. And so I got one sent to me this week, fresh off the, the ink, you know, from his hand, right? And uh, I have a real one here, and I have a fake one, Okay. What's funny is I went down into the prayer room this morning, and they were praying uh, for you as you came in, and they were praying, praying over me. And, and I showed uh, uh, our prayer team leader both of these balls and asked him, which one is the real one? And uh, you know, what's funny is uh, Shauna Freeman this morning helped me with this because she actually signed one. And, uh, and you don't know which one it is, but I went down that room, and guess which one they picked? They picked Shauna's. Do you know what? Some things just aren't real, are they? Aren't you glad that God didn't leave you guessing? He didn't leave you guessing and think, oh, is that the real God? Or is that one? Hmm. Paul says he's shown to be the Son of God. He has all, all, all authenticity of the Messiah because he rose again. That's powerful. We don't have to, we don't have to, to guess. Now, which one's the real one? No one probably, you can't see from where you're at. You have no clue. Which one, Wayne? You think it's this one? You think it's this one? Yeah, it's this one. This one's the real one. I don't know what, they go for different prices on the internet if you look at them. Um, but this one's the fake one. Who wants the fake one, huh? No, no one wants the fake one. <laughs> right? But you know what? There's a lot of people in our world that are pleased with this. They're pleased with the fake thing. You know what? There's idols that we like to worship, and it's not the real deal. And I will tell you, counterfeit sometimes looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Matter of fact, I have a couple. I used to play ice hockey. Anybody ever play hockey? Anybody? No? I'm not in a hockey area. I know. I see one back there. That's because you were from Maine. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, if you were in the Northeast, um, this is a hockey puck I used to play with. Now, I actually, there's a hole in the middle. I used it for a wind chime. <laughs> but why didn't I put a hole... Why didn't I put a hole 
and this one. Because this one's been signed by Mark andre Fleury. He's one of the, uh, the goalies for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I'm from Pittsburgh. And so I didn't put a hole in this one. Why? Because it was the real deal. And I have papers that give me the uh, certificate of, uh, the certificate of authenticity. And that's a powerful thing. I'm not going to put a hole in this one. Why? Because it's the real deal. See, what, what, what is fake in our world and what is real matters. And Paul tells us, listen, because of the resurrection, because of the resurrection, it is, he is real. He's a God that has shown himself to be the one true God. And then I have this. This, one's, this is a good one of mine. This is, I love Dan Marino. Some of you don't know, but Dan Marino grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Even though he didn't play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he played for who? Miami Dolphins. Yes. So I have one of his jerseys. And what's it have on there? I have a certificate of what? Authenticity. That matters, doesn't it? You know, it's something about, would, now would you pay $750 if this didn't have a certificate of authenticity? Of course you wouldn't. And you know why? Because you want the real deal. Are you with me? You want the real deal. We all do. What else do I have? I already showed you. Who wants a, who wants a hockey puck? Anybody want a hockey puck? This isn't the real deal either. It's, it's soft. Here, Ed, can you catch this? Oh, give it up for Ed. Now, Here's, here's something about, any, anybody like money? Huh? Of course, we all like money, right? This is, this is the real deal. This is $100. Matter of fact, I have a stash of $100 right here. Remember I told you you're going home with something? Aren't you glad you came to church? Matter of fact, right now, I need the ushers. Come on down. Ushers, just come on. This is spontaneous. They have no clue I'm asking them to do this. Come on down. You say, well, Pastor Brandon, what are you doing? I'm going to give everybody a $100 bill. Every one of them. Okay? Now, Paul, I want you to, to split all these hundreds up, okay? Can you do that for me? <clears throat> this is the real deal. It has the marker on it. <laughs> but you're all going to get $100 here, Okay? You're all going to get $100. So ushers, go ahead and pass those out. Make sure everybody gets one. I need one, too. Yeah, just give me, give me, I, I, I have to take my family out to eat, so I need one. Okay. Everybody gets one of these. Now, as they're passing them out, make sure if you, if you miss, listen, this is the only $100 you're getting today, okay? At least from, at least from me, at least from me. Now, you might say, well, Pastor Brandon, why, why are you giving us a, a whole why are you giving us a $100 bill, a $100 bill? How can we afford that? Well, the good answer is we can't. <laughs> yes, the $100 that you're getting is a little smaller than the what? The real one. Well, Pastor Brandon, come on. I thought we were all going home with something, you know, great. You are. It's 100 bucks. Now, it does say, it even says in God we trust on it, so it has to be real, right? <laughs> now, when you, go, when, you go to, you know, when you go to Texas Roadhouse today, or when you go to whatever restaurant you're going, you know, just lay that down. Don't tell them where you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got that at church. They said they were giving out the real thing, you know? <laughs> you know, here's, here's the deal, folks. Here's the deal. It says even on it, play money, right? See, the authenticity of our king, listen to me today, it is everything to us. Matter of fact, the authenticity is what makes things real. We need to be rooted in the authenticity of God's word, church. That is why we're taking the time as a church to gently walk through the book of Romans and the next 20 years. <laughs> no, we're not going to, seriously, we're not going to spend that much time in it. But I will tell you this, church, we are going to take our time to walk through the book of the Romans. Why? Because God's word is so powerful and it's so authentic that it will change who you are. It will change who you are. 
Now everybody has their $100, right? Okay, go ahead and put those up. Everybody look at their fake $100 bill. It says play money on it. And it's for a reason. You know, they can't print these unless they put play money. Listen, church, God did not play around with us. Are you with me? But this is why I gave you a fake $100 bill today. It's important not only that our God was authentic, but it's important that you are authentic. See, we can be fake. We can play church. But God did not intend for us to be that way. He wanted us to be real as well. See, our God's real. Why don't we be real? Why aren't we real? If our God is real, we need to be the same with him. And Paul is saying to us in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, he was shown to be the Son of God because the power of his resurrection. There was power in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want you to see this. Look at Romans chapter 5, or actually Romans chapter 6, verse number 5. It says, for if we have been united with him in death, like his, we will certainly also be united with him in the resurrection like his. Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says this, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, church, if you ask Jesus into your heart, the spirit of God is residing inside you. That makes all the difference in the world for you, friends. Because when the spirit of God is in you, it says this, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you the spirit of god is alive and listen if it's the same spirit that we see here that paul is writing about in romans if it's the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead and the reason we celebrate today here at this service that he's alive if he can take dead things and bring them to life he can take a hurt life and give it some purpose amen that's the God we serve. That's the God that raised from the dead. He's the God that has all power. And there is power in the resurrection. You know the heart of the Father? The heart of the Father was always to provide for his children. Always. He came to give us life. You're no accident that you're here today, church. If you came today and you say, well, I, I don't come very often. I would encourage you, don't make that a habit. Don't make it a habit. Because God has incredible purpose for your life. God sees things that we don't see. He can help you through things that you have no clue how to handle. He's a God that not only loves you, but he's a God that provides for us. He's a God that heals. He's a God that continues to provide and give guidance when we ask him. You know, the resurrection is God's last, loudest proclamation that this is my beloved son. This is him. This is who I sent so that you could have life and life abundantly. Life in its fullness. And I don't know about you, but I want life in its fullness. I really do. See, the resurrection is the cornerstone of our whole Christian faith. There is no, like I said earlier, there's no person that was raised from the dead once he died, except Jesus. Matter of fact, Billy Graham said this. He said, the entire plan, the entire plan of the future for the future has its key in the resurrection. Have you ever been locked out of a house? Have you ever been locked out of something because you forgot a key? It's hard to get in. Now, some of you, some of you are really, you know, maybe good at getting getting in in a locked lock place, you know, you know, maybe uh, cutting that lock or whatever the case is. You know, I don't know if we have a locksmith in the house, but they have tools that they can actually get into vehicles fairly easy, right? You know, but if you have a key, it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? And the key to the future is the resurrection. Matter of fact, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is, is revolutionary in human history. It is what sets humanity free from its sin. It is what really gives us daily victory over the evil and the sin in our world. 
It's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that resides within us. There is nothing that compares to the Christian faith. There's nothing. It is the only faith that is on planet Earth that has been authenticated. Think about it. It's the only one. No matter what is out there and no matter what somebody tells you, Jesus is the only person that was shown through the resurrection to be the one true God. And that should give us great confidence today that he is worth serving. Amen? Amen. It distinguishes between all other faiths in the world. So what does the resurrection mean for me? What does it? What does it mean for me? It means that Jesus provided a way for you to have relationship with the Father again. He provided a way for you to have relationship. I don't know what you've come in with today. I, don't, I really don't. I don't know what, what baggage that you might have. I don't know what heart, heartache you have. But some of you have walked into this place today, and you could be really honest and say, Pastor, I, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with, with my faith. I'm struggling with, with, with God working in my life, and it's probably because I, I've been kind of fake in my relationship with him. Just like this puck, it's not, no one signed it or anything. It is the real deal, but it's, there's a hole in it now, so it doesn't operate like it should, and they wouldn't use that in a real game because that hole would interfere with its gliding on the ice. Are you with me? But you know what? No matter what holes you have in your heart and your life, no matter what has happened to you, you know how many times you've been hurt, beat up, or broken? Our God is a God that can restore you. Our God is a God that can reconcile you to the proper relationship that he designed us for. You know, sometimes, sometimes for, for each of us, it takes admitting we need a Savior. It takes admitting that I want love. And sometimes, sometimes just, as, just as all of us sit here and, and, and think about this authenticity thing that I really, I really, my message today, I don't even know if I mentioned it, but it's really the authenticity of our king. He's a king that is authentic. Because he did what he said he was going to do, church. And the worship team is coming, and I, I want us to take some time to really consider some things today. This being a Sunday that we celebrate the resurrection of our King. The resurrection of Jesus is victory over sin, church. It is the power which enables every believer to defeat the sin in his and her life. The resurrection power is the ability to live a new life in Jesus Christ that brought redemption for us through Jesus. The life of victory over sin and evil. Paul wrote, in Ephesians, I want you to see something. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, it says this. I pray that the eyes of your heart, would you just cover your heart today? And this is my prayer for each of us that's here today. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he was called. He has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in a place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. My prayer today is that our hearts would be open to the authenticity of God's word. And the authenticity of of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very thing that sets every other religion, every other promise of any other faith apart. Because our Messiah died on the cross for you, went through a horrible death, took on the sin of the world, the perfect sacrifice, for why? For what? 
because he wanted relationship with you. Because he loves you. He cares for all of us. And you can leave here today with a fake hundred dollar bill to remind you that you need to be authentic in your faith just as he was authentic in raising from the dead. You can leave here today with an authentic relationship with Jesus. What's the difference between this real hundred dollar bill and this one besides size? I've heard you can spend it. I've heard that uh, one works, one doesn't. But you know what the truth? This one has value. This one does not. And let me tell you something about our God. You know why he's the real deal? Because he has always valued you. If you don't value something, you'll never do it, right? Are you with me, church? If you don't value someone, or if you don't value something, you will not take care of it. If you don't care less about your vehicle, you'll eat pizza in there. Right? Well, I do that anyway, Pastor Brandon. I care about my vehicle. But you'll eat pizza and you'll leave the box in there for a year. I've been in vehicles like that. It's like, wow, I see, you know, maybe, maybe you don't value that. Seriously. But our God values you so much. And when you value something so much, you will always take care of it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Think about something you value. And I pray that's probably someone that's living. But some of you value materialistic things more than people walking down the street. But let me tell you something. God valued something that would last forever. And it's not this. It's not this real $100 bill. Because this too will not get you into heaven. This might buy you something here on this earth, but it won't buy you your ticket to heaven. There's only one way. The Bible says there's only one way. And his way was provided upon the cross. But he rose again to prove, to prove something. To prove that you are valued beyond anything in all of eternity. More than anything you can think of that you love and you treasure. God treasures you 